Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. One last time, it ends with C-H-U-K. At least 84% of my emails are C-H-U-C-K. I appreciate it, but I prefer if it was proper. Anyway, I'm in a strange mood today. Very awkward, you know, I've been away for a while, uh, did a lot of conferences, missed our anniversary episode, was really disappointed about that. Had fun doing the tea thing taped something for you on Friday, was unable to show it to you for different reasons, so we had a big mashup, and Rose almost stole the show. So as you can see, the board is saying Rose over Gary. So you know, I'm a little bit worried about my career and my future, because I think she's gonna take my job. And so, um, that's on my mind. I'm feeling a little pressure. Like Ellen DeGeneres last night. What a very below average job for such a great entertainer. And so I wonder today, will my episode stink? Will it be an issue? Because uh, I'm feeling the pressure as the uh, up and coming upstart is uh, pushing me out the door. So I'm, I'm uh, very nervous and I hope you bear with me today on today's episode. And because of this weirdness and coming back to eight trillion emails and being snowstorm and wondering if I was supposed to tape outside today, but we missed the snowstorm, otherwise I might have gone out there again. Um, I've got a mixed bag today. You know, sometimes you're just in a weird mood. You know, sometimes a little different than the way you normally are. And that's what I am today. And because of that, I've got four very different wines from very different places doing very different things. And I may just do this the whole time because Rose, can you do this? Anyway, four different wines today. And so let's get right into the wines because that's enough about me. Torbrek, 2005 Woodcutters Semillon. The Semillon is very, very hot in Australia, but very, very not in the United States. And so it's very interesting. This is an 89 point Parker wine, 14 US dollars. Now Semillon has been a wine that I remember in the early days buying as a closeout all the time, 10, 15 years ago, because nobody bought this stuff. Um, very great color a lot of times on Semillon. This is the part of the world you want to get it from, Barossa Valley, no doubt, uh, brings it to the table. 14 bones, 89 RP, and you know, just a different style of wine. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. On the nose, it's gonna have that honey suckle. Lots of honey with Semillon. And I'm not a big honey fan, but this is a little bit of a different honey. This is like that sweet honey. You know, like that friendly honey, not the mean honey. You know what I'm talking about. Also, you're getting a little a little bit of that petrolness coming through on Semillon sometimes. Also, a very lively hint of apricots and lemons. An apricot and lemon salad on the nose on this wine. So it's quite intriguing. Again, one of the really intriguing things about Semillon is that a lot of people have never had one. As a matter of fact, side question of the day. Now give it to me, I'm gonna go lefty. Ooh, I hit, I hit the mic. Um, side question, have you ever had a Semillon? I'd love to see that because I'm almost positive most people have not. 13% alcohol, so not too high at all. Let's give it a whirl. nice. David Powell is a tremendous winemaker. The red wines are world class and extremely sought after. I like this wine. It's got a lot of body. Very melted butter meets lemon flavor. So it's almost like eating a lobster without eating the lobster. You know what I mean? And I'm getting a lot of that flavor profile. As a matter of fact, if you can't have butter anymore because your cholesterol's high, you know, maybe you can have lobster, which actually can't have lobster either. So just drink the Torbeck Semillon. It's not all the way there, but it's kind of like having a lobster. Um, 14 bucks, I think it's a very good value for what it is. It's got a lot of body, very heavy, like a Chardonnay, but different flavors, not over oaked, much more on the apricots, lemons, honey, little, little tiny hint of butter on the finish, but very well put together, a good bottle of wine, I've gotta give, my favorite lawyer from Maryland, a lot of credit. I'm also gonna go to 89 points on this wine. This is a good bottle of wine, definitely worth exploring, and there's a lot of people who are gonna like this even a little bit more. And if uh, you're a Chardonnay Oaky fan, don't even approach this. Nice, great nose too. Let's move on, that was fun. Now we're gonna go with a wine from Ribera del Duero. This is a 2003 Condado de Haza from Pesquera. And this is a, a, a 90 point Stephen Tanzer wine, 19 bucks, 100% Tempranillo. And uh, I'm excited about trying this one. 
give it a little bit of a rinse first. Canada de Haza has long been a value wine. As a matter of fact, just a couple years ago, it was like 12 to 13 bucks a bottle and getting great press. It was a lot of fun. It's scooted up a little bit now. It's in a $19 price range. But again, great area. Ribera de Duero will do a whole thing on that. We just did Priorat and Rioja not too long ago, so we'll definitely get into Ribera soon. But I feel like just trying this because I'm in a different kind of mood. Let's give it a little bit of a look. Pretty dark. What should we talk about? I kind of miss you guys. I feel like I've been away for so long. It's kind of like the first day of school with people you've gone to school with, you know what I mean? Your whole life. That's how I kind of feel today. Um, Vaniac t-shirt update. Vaniac t-shirt, which a lot of you now have because of the wonderful offer. Huge contest. If you have not checked this out, there's a link above me right now, Vaniac t-shirt, click that. There has been a very special thing added to the uh, tour. Um, so uh, please get your creative juices going. A lot of you are gonna enter, I'm sure. Hopefully, if you have any questions, Simot is behind the uh, camera today. We'll be answering them via email. I know he's got a, quite a few already. He can lead you towards uh, the way. He's not that creative, so I wouldn't listen to him because you're probably gonna lose. But you should definitely enter because a trip with me for a weekend in California with the wineries and the VIP treatment and the dinners and special meetings of people and a couple of different things, a little rock climbing, a little foosball table action, a little street hockey. It's gonna be an awesome weekend. Ah, the wines of Ribera. Great nose, a lot of cherry coming through on this wine. I'm also getting a little burnt wood. Uh, cinnamon coming through as well on this nose, so a little bit of that as well. Great acidity, great tannins. Nice structure, nice bottle of wine. Um, Great complexity on the fruit. Um, I like the finish. Real nice mid palette, but a great finish. Real silky smooth. And this would be very popular with the masses. This is the kind of wine I look for to recommend on a whole for a lot of people that are just getting into wine looking for something a little bit more serious that like Bordeaux style wines but are looking for a little more fruit. That's the kind of wine this is. Um, I'm enjoying the structure of the blackberry and the black currant. Cherry flavors in the beginning quickly give way to the black fruits. Little plum action on the finish. Great structure. Nice, nice terroir driven flavors. And I know Julius. What I mean by terroir, this tastes like Ribera. It reminds me of the wines, wines of Ribera. It's got a little bit of that underlining sawdust under the fruit, which I really associate with this area. I'm liking this wine. It's not a profound effort. It's not an effort that's gonna change my life. It's not gonna change your life. But with a great piece of steak, this is easily a great combo under 20 bones, and that's a very, very intriguing thing to look at. This is an 89 plus point wine. I wanna give it 90 points, but a little bit of its off balanceness is scaring me a little bit, and I can see some people Actually, no, I'm wrong. This is 90 points. I'm just being a little tough today because I'm a little weird, remember? 90 points on this bad boy. This is a good bottle of wine. Nice effort. Let's move on. Titus, 2004 Cabernet Franc from California. St. Helena, 90 points. Robert Parker, 31 US dollars. And this I definitely had to try on a weird day because it's a weird wine. We do not get a lot of Cabernet Francs from California. We just don't carry a whole lot. Because to be honest with you, they just don't match up really well against the wines from the Loire Valley and other places, including Long Island. I feel like Long Island has made better Cabernet Franc than California. And so um, um, this is intriguing. This has got a big score. A lot of people have been asking for it, so we brought it in. We just got it. I have not had this wine. I've never had Titus Cabernet Franc, so I'm excited to try it. Really nice color again, Cabernet Franc, we've talked a lot about because we've done the Chinon and uh, we've, we've had some good success with them. And so, um, the Bourgoy, and here it is, right off the bat, the nose on Cabernet Franc. So you can see the little small little dimple action right now because that greenness that you just don't get in so many other places. And if you're a huge green pepper, vegetable, you know, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, celery, take the celery and you can have the carrot, kind of guy like me, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is one of the best kind of noses in a wine you can find. I'm getting a very obvious strawberries with pepper. We're gonna go back to the strawberry with some pepper on it. Going with the asparagus and the celery sticks, this is an intriguing combination on the nose. First and foremost, this is a baby. Huge tannin structures, 
making, you know, I kind of walked into the kingdom. I kind of opened the doors and said, hey, let me taste you. And like 47 guards with machetes said, not today, Gary. And that's what kind of feel this way. That's the feeling I'm getting from this wine because this wine is really not trying to give me anything other than a kick in the nards and a machete scratch right on my shoulder because it does not want to open up in any shape or form. Very tight, very, very tight. One of the tightest wines we've ever had on WLTV. Um, However, through that tightness, you can definitely taste certain things. There is some chocolate coming through in here, some black currant, um, and there's also some obvious, very light hints of vanilla and oak, almost Cabernet on the first shock. You might have noticed on my reaction, a little caught off guard. I was like, wait a minute, Cabernet Sauvignon, excuse me. Um, then it falls into the Cabernet Franc, but again, it's trying to be, you know, there's a great Russian saying, Zhopa na dva toilete. It's basically saying your butt on two separate toilets. You're trying to do too much. This is trying to be great Cab Franc, but it's also trying to be very California. And I'm not so sure if that's something that can be accomplished. It was definitely not accomplished by the Titus. Even though it's tight and there's not a lot of taste, I can really taste what this wine is gonna kinda sort of be like. That's what I do for a living. That's what I've done my whole life. I do not see this as a profound effort. I'm gonna go 87 points plus on this wine. And obviously for $31, that is a huge huge pass, you can throw up all the Z's you want. Oh, awesome, I actually made it. And you know what, I just uh, I just don't see this as a winner. Let's move on. Getting a little bit of that Mr. Bubbles bath soap that I talk about sometimes. Getting a little rinse. You know what I wanna talk about today? This day in history, we did this once, it was fun. And this day in history, something pretty cool happened. Today, in 1983, Michael Jackson's Thriller became number one on the, al- on, the, you know, on the album charts, as they say, and stayed there for 37 weeks in a row. What does that tell you? I'd like to know. What does that tell us? The Torin, Fusion 5, 2004, from South Africa. And this is a great breakdown. 55 Cab, 20 Cab Franc, 11 Malbec, 10 Merlot, 4 Petit Bordeaux, classic Bordeaux blend from South Africa, 34 US dollars, 91 points, Wine Spectator. And you know what, we've talked a lot about South Africa. I really believe South Africa is going to move to the forefront in this country over the next three or four years. And I'm just really impressed with a lot of their efforts. This is a wine on our special request forms on the website when we don't have in stock that constantly tops the charts. I think it's a sommelier's dream. A lot of psalms all over the country are putting this on their list because it drinks well, it drinks like a Bordeaux, it's got new world fruit, it's got a lot of double bubbles going for it. It's kind of achieving everything everybody wants. I've not had the 04 effort, I have had previous vintages, and the Torrens Fusion 5 is definitely becoming a standard on some of the best lists in the world, and I believe that's why we get so many requests on the website. People go out, they take the cork home, they go to the website, it's a very new world kind of way to do things, and you know, it's a lot of fun, and uh, we normally are out of stock, so they're sad at the end. Kind of, it's, that's a movie that kind of ends sad, I'm sorry. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. 37 weeks in a row, Mott, at the top thriller. I mean, I had the red jacket with the zippers. It took over my life in Edison, New Jersey. Admit it right now, you had the red jacket with the zippers. Everybody did. Did you have the glove, Mott? Did you do the moonwalk? No. Okay. Anyway, let's get to this wine. Really dark chocolate coming through on the nose, which is very intriguing. I'm also getting very light hints of dirty, stinky, wet leaves after a rainstorm in the fall. And that kind of is intriguing because it popped in my mind very hard. I mean, it's very, very reminiscent to that flavor profile. With some chocolate on it. So, you know, you're walking by and you just throw your Snickers on it and come back the next day and eat it after it melted a little bit. Because after it rained, it got hot and it melted melt the chocolate. Great, t- wow. First and foremost, this is awesome. You know what, sometimes things just work out. Okay, ready? This wine has an enormity of tannin structure, just as much as the Titus. And before you might have said, as we were segueing and I was doing the Titus, well how does Gary really know? How does Gary really know if it's not gonna open up and blossom into a beautiful bird that flies around the world and loves everybody? This is how. This wine also has the exact if not a little bit more, of very bitter, tight, blocking tannins. However, 
as you drink a lot of young wine, and most of you, believe it or not, are able to do this. It's just a consistency in watching how wines evolve. Most of you don't buy a wine and taste the 12 bottles over 12 years or have the ability to go to a lot of tastings like I do to see how wines evolve over time. But what is really intriguing to me is both of these wines have a tremendous amount of tannin structure of upfrontness that is making it difficult to taste through the wine. However you can. And what this wine does that this wine didn't do was it came out. And there's a lot of flavors going on in this wine. And there's some intriguing flavors. I mean, the first flavor that I'm really getting is very muddy and cloudy, again, wet rock and dirt and mud. More mud than anything else. However, I'm getting little hints of chocolate, licorice, great cedar bark, and a lot of other things. Plus, the finish is, you know, is complete and together and not all over the place. Again, this wine can come together, but this is a perfect example of two wines that are bringing an enormous amount of tannins that are extremely young, but are clearly showing you in the previews. You know, you see a movie in the previews and you just know you're not gonna like it. It's kind of like that. This wine is showing you something you wanna go out and see. And, uh, you know, Departed, great job by them last night. What an awesome movie that was. Um, except it was based in Boston. I think they were all Patriot fans, so I could never really get through that during the movie. It was always in my mind. Um, Wow, very old world in its approach. Um, very, very earthy tone driven, very, very nice tannins. I'm getting a very, very fine hint of like pine cone and like pine needles and like black pepper and like red currants and even a little hint of pomegranate. There is an explosion of excitement in this wine. I'm really intrigued by this bottle of wine. It really reminds me of top-notch 50, 60, $70 Bordeaux. I think 91 points by spectators a tad low. I'm gonna go 92 on this wine. I'm very into this bottle of wine. It's a great effort. Once again, reminds me that South Africa is really coming on. Please seek out wines. What a fun little bag of different wines today. I really, really did enjoy it. Question of the day. I just came back from a web conference, so I'm gonna give you a link over here. I'm gonna do this once in a while because I am very much into the web. Here's a little link over here of my website of the week. A site that I like, it's Magnolia. Check it out, it's a bookmarking site. I think you'll like it. So I'm gonna put a link over here. I want from you, very simply, what is your favorite non-wine website that you're hanging out, enjoying, using, liking, reading, touching, playing, feeling these days? Put a link in there, I'm gonna click them all, see what you guys are all about. Because you, with a little bit of me, yeah. I feel like I broke something. We're changing the wine world, aren't we?